Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is that time again where we have the Apex Legends Season 11 Escape Patch Notes. We're going to be talking about Watson, we're going to be talking about the gold guns that are out. There's some changes to rank that I'm not sure everyone's necessarily excited about. That's probably going to need its own dedicated video. On the channel, I have uploaded already 10 videos. So some of this I may skim over and kind of talk a little bit about. I've already uploaded Ash Guide, some gameplay, some stuff on the new map, talking about Watson more in depth. Let's just get into it. So the new legend is Ash. We were all talking about this. Let's talk very high level really quick about her abilities. I put out a guide on this forever where I myth bust everything. Kind of show what happens when you tie it with different abilities. And the but let's talk about Marked for Death, which Ash shows the location of recent death boxes. She gets a special prompt on her death, bo death box and uses a mark surviving attackers once her box. The downside I can think about this is what if she needs to do an armor swap mid fight? It's probably one of the downsides I didn't highlight in my video. Arc Snare throws a spinning snare that damages and tethers the first enemy that gets close, and her phase breach tears a one-way portal to a targeted location. This portal stays open for a short duration, during which anyone can can use. Now, it says see Ash's abilities here. I recommend going to see my video on it. We talked about the new map. I have gameplay on this. There's a lot of great POIs. This largest map that they released to date is 15% larger than World's Edge. So this is going to be great, but the map rotation for ranked is going to be on Storm's Point for the first, and then the second, let's see here. For escape update, the map rotation will be down to two maps, Storm Point and World's Edge. Okay, so we're only going to have two. With Storm Point being the whole new map, we'll make sure players have plenty of time to master the new arena. Makes sense. I heard for, for ranked that it was Storm Point first, and then it was Olympus. I need to double check on that as we keep going through this. The arena's map rotation. With the introduction of Encore, the arena's map rotation will now include only the custom-made arena maps. We will not be using BR locations. Okay, that's... I guess that's fine. The new car SMG. Now, just to highlight, this utilizes both light and heavy mags and heavy and light ammo. Flexible weapon. I have a guide on it on the channel already as well. Now, this is the tricky part. The ranked updates. I'm going to need a little bit more time to break this down. I'm going to have a link down in the description for all of this to really highlight. Now, let's see. We fixed an issue where expired sky trails remain accessible for longer than they should have. These trails will not expire in intended seasonal cadence, as mentioned originally in the rank series. Trails from the... Okay. So, I have noticed this as well, where I was I had prior trails and they weren't disappearing. It looks like they're going to, which... I don't, I don't agree with. I think we should keep them. I, I kind of like, I don't even use all of them, but it's nice to have them and see them in game. I'm kind of sad about this, especially because I haven't had much time this season to play a lot of ranked, partly because, you know, new baby here and, you know, we've been just posting a lot of content. So the changes that are happening with ranked, this is really, really big. Kill, kill cape uh, RP values now take the difference between killer, victim, ranked tiers into account. Meaning, are you killing somebody who's a predator, a master, a diamond? How much RP value you're going to get? The kill RP cap, as we traditionally thought, or how they mentioned, is effectively being raised from six to seven. However, the kill-related cap can be reached in different ways. I may need to read. I might be misunderstanding this, so let's continue reading. To expand on the first point, tier differences between the killer and victim will be taken account when calculated based on kill value. For example, if a plot player can kills a diamond player, that kill count. Kill counts as 12 instead of 10 RP. Okay, I follow. Some points of clarification, clarification, excuse me. Victims do not lose more or less points when killed in terms of entry cost. Only the killer receives a modifier. Okay, Apex Predator and Master are treated the same tier. That makes sense. An encounter kind of makes sense. Okay, fair. All right, an encounter rate with someone at three plus tier difference is ultra rare, less than 0.1%. Ranked matchmaking staying the same. Okay. So they have a breakdown of this. I want to do its own video and I need to put this into effect because this kind of, I mean, I get it, but I don't know if this makes it harder or easier. I think that's why they're raising the kill point number, but then this really counts in terms of kills. What if people stream snipe, like the, the big names, like the masters and predators who are streaming just to get more RP from them or push them more? I, that's where the downside is and I know the streamer mode and I know okay yeah put your stream on delay but then you don't interact with your audience so this makes it really rough for somebody on the upper echelon and especially I don't know I don't know how I feel about that I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do a dedicated video on this and I'm gonna have to play rank this coming season and really feel that I'll probably hit masters again I know I didn't get to really play this much this past season it's just been a little crazy but we'll see right we'll see 
ranked arenas now has two splits, okay, because it was only one before. Improves the mid-mage and matchmaking to find similar skill teammates, reduce the AP amount gain or loss or MR differences between team. Okay, it's not massive changes, but okay. With a soft MMR re reset. All right. This is the big one. I put a video on this, but her hitbox has been changed. Uh, she's got a larger hitbox, slightly. It doesn't, it's not necessarily broken. I feel like it's such a small adjustment. It's not like a massive one, but it just kind of puts her more in line. Her reliability, responsiveness, placing tactical and ultimate and world objects is greatly improved. I can attest to that from my video that I posted. Watson can place her tactical ultimates on valid surfaces above Watson's eye level to reasonable extent, which is, it's it's just sharper. She has more damage to her offenses, 15 to 20 damage, increased debuff on crossing offense by 100%. So this is a, a reduced time, like it pops up faster. Increase the time allowance to hit again by subsequent fence. Everything is just, it, it, it just feels snappier. So when I talk about Watson rework, I just mentioned it just works, meaning like they're this is it's almost like how she probably should have been before but you know i digress increased placement by 50 percent decreased delay between fences shutting on and off watson now moves at unarmed speed while oh that's nice i didn't even realize that in terms of my own gameplay but that that's kind of nice makes her a lot more mobile i like that the pylon reduced from three to one the pylon lasts forever but now only caps at 250 shield the recharge rate is faster and smooth regen rate so it's increased pylon shield, shield regenerate. It's it's faster. When the pylon is out of shields, it no longer recharges player shields, but can still zap incoming objects. Taking damage or regenerate shields via the pylon delays continued regeneration by one second. The U on the ground and HUD, this is a decent change. I, I don't know if that's a nerf or, but a quality of life maybe. The U on the ground and HUD element now displays the amount of shields that remain in the pylon. Pinging it at friendly pylon would display the percentage, which is nice. Uh, pylon Orden zapping has been moderately reworked. Now, I, I, you know, one thing I didn't notice, does this also heal enemies like it did before? I don't think that's clear on that. I don't even think I have that clarity on my video. I'm going to have to test that out at launch, so I apologize for that. Or this is now zap when the pylon detects it would hit any surface. So it, it just it just works. It works better. Supply drop rotation, that's G7 scouts in there. I cover that. The dual shell, you can supply two shells instead of one, so faster reload. The full, the Mastiff, 3030, R301, car, and longbow have been added for gold weapons. They removed the PK, Rampage, RE45, Flatline, and Charged Rifle as not gold weapons anymore. The EVA 8 has been nerfed, so it's just slightly slower rate of fire. They increased the pellet size, so the Peacekeeper kind of buffing it a bit. Just give it a little bit of love, so it kind of falls more in line. The Longbow has been nerfed. The L-Star has been nerfed as well. The Barrel Effectiveness as well as the damage. The G7 Scout has been buffed. It also has a double tap added there. I think the ammo count, in my opinion, could be much higher. This is my opinion. The Supply Drop Weapon Rates have been changed as well from 25% to 50, 55, or excuse me, 50 to 75, 75 to 100%. Now the crafting, this is huge. I, I cover this in my tips, but it goes from 20 to 60 whenever you craft. So you get a lot more ammo whenever you craft it. Also the cost for the EVA armors, the points that you get is now increased to 150, meaning you could get blue right off the rip. And also e the EVA armor cost though is now increased to 50. So a lot of these changes I, I cover in my videos, which is why I'm able to blast through them and cover them so efficiently. I know a lot of this stuff already, which I'm really, really hyped about. I'm glad I got most of this all pretty much 100% right. These are arena changes. They increase the cost of the Mosam, which is smart because it was really, really easy to get. Uh, they looks like they so that's a nerf on the Mozam. The buff on the P2020 Arif kind of has a bit of a buff. Prowler buff to get it faster. Nerf the R9. The Hemlock a bit of a buff. So this is just in terms of costing like upgrades and stuff. Uh, quality of life. The teammates now show when they are self reviving on the world. They also communicate when they're out of ammo. They updated map rotation images and they uh, let's talk about bug fixes. Uh, there was one seer. I don't think this was a, this was a bug, but sure. They removed the ability for players to bunny hop at full speed while using passive. Yeah, I, I thought that was just a. Anyways, fix the bug is ultimate cooldown being the same without. Okay, that's understandable. And I think that pretty much covers everything here, which is 
which is a lot. Uh, I think we need his own dedicated video for the rank split, which I'm going to do midway through for all you guys and talk about, because I have like a full chart and well, that other video is a little bit obsolete now. But again, I hopefully you guys are really excited for the season. The patch notes are looking really great. I know there's not a lot of other legend changes, but from the word from the developers is that more is to come. They just want to kind of ship out the way things are. Because one, for map balancing. Two, to see how players react. One, this is a main focus on Watson. And of course, we have a new legend. So thank you guys so much for watching. Check out all the channel uh, content on the channel. Please, please, please. I think you guys are really going to love it. I put a lot of time into it. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.